Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 22nd of March and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 25th of March and it's been a rather mixed week for global equity markets. US markets closed at a fresh month high in the wake of this week's unexpectedly dovish tilt from the US Federal Reserve when it comes to monetary policy and I think what was more surprising about the Fed's statement and guidance on Wednesday was the fact that in the space of less than three months we've gone from having the prospect of three rate rises um, in 2019 to none, absolutely zero. And it's really prompting the question from investors and, mar and, and markets in general, I think, as to whether or not the next move in Fed policy is likely to be a rate cut as opposed to a rate hike. That's how far we've come in the space of three months. And I think that's been really reflected in the performance of the S&P 500 and US markets in general. That, I think, an optimism over the US economy, because even when you look at the US economy, that still appears to be the best of a pretty disappointing bunch. Um, still expected to grow in excess of 2% in 2019. And uh, as such, when compared to, say, for example, the Chinese economy or the European economy, it's still still pretty much outperforming uh, relative to the rest of the world. And I think that's really being reflected in some of the data that we've seen outside of the US, because if you look outside of the US, the picture isn't anywhere near as rosy. So say, for example, we look at the Germany 30, the DAX, and that does appear to be looking to test the uptrend line that we've been in since those lows in December. And I think some of the pessimism around the European economy uh, hasn't been helped by a very disappointing um, German manufacturing PMI number, flash PMI number for March, coming in at 44.7 lowest number since the summer of 2012 and that really does point to a global manufacturing recession um, if if and when we see the PMIs out of China and Japan and the rest of the world essentially at the beginning of next month and I think what it does also underscore is the possibility that we could well see much more aggressive easing by the European Central Bank going forward. If you actually look at the German domestic economy, it's still looking fairly positive with services PMIs in the mid 50s, but manufacturing points to a very grim outlook for the manufacturing sector overall. I think the key level for me on the DAX is these key lows around about 11,400, that this low, these lows through here and the 50 day moving average. So I think the failure to get through the 200 day moving average could precipitate further declines if we break below 11,400. So as we look ahead to the coming week, it won't surprise you to know that the main focus will continue to remain on Brexit. Yes, the B word. And that would appear to have moved on a little bit. It now looks much less likely that the European Union, sorry, the UK will be leaving the European Union on the 29th of March uh, this coming month. The, at the latest European Council meeting, a decision was taken to extend the UK's departure date um, to the 22nd of May on the condition that MPs are able to pass Theresa May's very unpopular deal, withdrawal agreement, in the event that that is voted down again, and that looks increasingly likely, then MPs will have until the 12th of April to come up with alternative solutions. So, so as we look ahead to the coming week, there will be votes in Parliament to extend Article 50, from the 29th of March to the 12th of April, assuming that Theresa's, Theresa May's deal doesn't actually pass, and that would appear to be the likely outcome after the response to the Prime Minister's speech of earlier this week. In fact, I'll be surprised if it actually doesn't lose by more votes than the number of votes it lost 
um, on the second reading. And as a reminder, it was 149 votes. So um, it's highly likely that that vote will that will, the the deal will get voted down again. And really, then it really comes down to MPs to vote on a series of alternative solutions, which does has a majority does have a majority because at the moment, while we have complete clarity on what MPs don't want, we don't as yet have any clear idea of what they will be happy with. So we saw a big a bit of a sell-off in the cable um, over the course of the past couple of days. What we haven't done as yet seen is a break below the 200-day moving average. And I think that really is the key level for me, the 50 and the 200-day moving averages at the moment. We're finding the upside pretty difficult in any way or in around one, the 133 area. But we, are, we do appear to be finding some level of support between 129.80 and 130 the figure. So if we can hold above 130 the figure, then we could well see a continuation of the move higher. If, on the other hand, we're unable to sustain levels above 130, then we could see a broader correction back down to these lows here, which we saw um, during the middle of February around about 127.80, 128. So parliamentary votes are going to be the key the key arbiters, I think, for the direction of sterling over the course of the next week. So political risk. We do have um, a number of economic data items to keep an eye out for, but they're all pretty much dated in terms of their relevance. UK fourth quarter GDP final number which is due out on Friday. Um, but as I say, I mean, that's likely to show that the UK economy had a disappointing end to 2018 um, with half the level of economic activity that we saw in Q3. So that's expected to come in around about 0.2, 0.3%. Business investment is, again, expected to be the largest drag on that. We've also got le the final fourth quarter GDP numbers out of the US on the 28th. We've got flash CPI from the European Union also on the 29th. And that will once again um, refocus market attention on ECB policy going forward, which in the wake of those really disastrous PMIs out of France and, and Germany on the manufacturing side, is really likely to f refocus attention on the risks of um, to the EU of no deal. This is not a zero-sum game here. Um, Emmanuel Macron can... Um, talk all he likes about the fact that France is ready for no deal. Um, those PMI numbers give the lie to that statement. We've also got German IFO business sentiment a survey in light of those PMI numbers. They, that, that particular number will be very interesting and that is due out business sentiment due out on the 25th. And a couple of number key items out over the course of this week. Apart from full year earnings, we also have the Lyft IPO. Uh, ride sharing app Lyft is due to IPO on the 28th of March. CMC Markets will be covering that IPO. We will be pricing that IPO in the afternoon of that day. And that will value on the NASDAQ with a valuation coming in around $20 billion. 30.77 million shares will be listed between $62 and 68 management are hoping to raise a total of around two billion dollars now we could well see a decent pop higher we certainly did on the levi strauss ipo this week but looking at the numbers and i've got to say this could be more a case of mimicking snap than mimicking facebook so be interesting to see how that goes and we've also got an apple event on the 25th where apple is expected to unveil a new subscription-based video streaming service which is expected to take the fight to Amazon and Netflix. I can't help thinking that Apple are playing catch up in this regard. But what we have seen on Apple shares over the course of the past three months is a significant move higher, despite the fact they posted that profits warning earlier this year. We've broken above the 200 day moving average. We're looking to retest the 61.8 retracement level of the entire down move from the peaks that we saw in October to the lows that we saw in December. So that's going to be around about $198, $200 a share. Keep an eye on Apple shares in the wake of that event. So that's it for this week. As I say, catch up on all the um, details of what's going on in the morning update on the news and analysis section of the website. You can click on that. Otherwise, thanks very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.